Section 35 of Common Sense in the Household. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Common Sense in the Household A Manual of Practical Housewifery by Marion Harlan. Griddle Cakes, Waffles, etc. If you have not used your griddle or waffle iron for some time, wash it off hard with hot soap and water wipe and rub well with dry salt heat it and grease with a bit of fat salt pork on a fork it is a mistake besides being slovenly and wasteful to put on more grease than is absolutely necessary to prevent the cake from sticking a piece of pork an inch square should last for several days put on a great spoonful of butter for each cake and before filling the griddle test it with a single cake to be sure that all is right with it as well as the batter the same rules apply to waffles always lay hot cakes and waffles upon a hot plate as soon as baked buckwheat cakes one quart buckwheat flour four tablespoonfuls yeast one teaspoonful salt one handful indian meal two tablespoonfuls molasses not syrup warm water enough to make a thin batter beat very well and set to rise in a warm place if the batter is in the least sour in the morning stir in a very little soda dissolved in hot water mix in an earthen crock and leave some in the bottom each morning a cupful or so to serve as sponge for the next night instead of getting fresh yeast in cold weather this plan can be successfully pursued for a week or ten days without setting a new supply of course you add the usual quantity of flour etc every night and beat up well do not make your cakes too small buckwheat should be of generous size some put two-thirds buckwheat one-third oatmeal omitting the indian flannel cakes one quart milk three tablespoonfuls yeast one tablespoonful butter melted two eggs well beaten one teaspoonful salt flour to make a good batter set the rest of the ingredients as a sponge overnight and in the morning add the melted butter and eggs cornmeal flapjacks one quart sour buttermilk two eggs beaten light one teaspoonful salt one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water two tablespoonfuls molasses one tablespoonful lard melted one half cup flour meal to make a batter a trifle thicker than flannel cakes graham cakes two cups brown flour one cup white flour three cups sour or buttermilk one full teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water one teaspoonful salt one heaping tablespoonful lard three eggs beaten very light if you use sweet milk add two teaspoonfuls cream tartar bake as soon as they are mixed auntie's cakes without eggs one quart sour or buttermilk two teaspoonfuls soda small ones one teaspoonful salt flour to make a tolerably thick batter stir until smooth no longer and bake immediately eggless flannel cakes one quart milk one half teacupful yeast two cups white flour one cup indian meal one tablespoonful lard melted one teaspoonful salt set overnight adding the lard in the morning grandpa's favorites one quart milk two cups stale bread crumbs one good handful of flour one tablespoonful melted butter three eggs well beaten one teaspoonful salt work the bread and milk smooth stir in the butter and eggs then the salt lastly just enough flour to bind the mixture if too thick add milk these are wholesome and good take care they do not stick to the griddle risen batter cakes three cups white indian meal one cup white flour one tablespoonful butter melted and added in the morning one quart milk four tablespoonfuls of yeast one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water and added in the morning one teaspoonful salt mix overnight rice cakes one cup cold boiled rice one pint flour one teaspoonful salt two eggs beaten light milk to make a tolerably thick batter beat all together well hominy cakes two cups fine hominy boiled and cold one cup white flour one quart milk three eggs very well beaten one teaspoonful salt beat smooth the hominy work in the milk and salt 
then the flour lastly the eggs bake at once and keep the mixture well stirred cream cakes one pint cream and same quantity of milk slightly sour four eggs whites and yolks whipped separately one teaspoonful soda dissolved in boiling water one teaspoonful salt flour to make a good batter well beaten in velvet cakes one quart new unskimmed milk half cream and half milk is preferable three eggs whites and yolks beaten separately and very stiff one teaspoonful salt rice flour mix the beaten yolks with the milk add the salt then rice flour to make a batter as thick as that for flannel cakes lastly whip in the stiffened whites very lightly and bake immediately risen waffles one quart milk one heaping quart flour five tablespoonfuls yeast two eggs one tablespoonful melted butter one teaspoonful salt set the mixture minus the eggs and butter overnight as a sponge add these in the morning and bake in waffle irons mother's waffles two cups milk two eggs three cups flour one teaspoonful cream tartar one half teaspoonful soda one salt spoonful salt one tablespoonful melted butter sift the cream tartar into the flour with the salt dissolve the soda in a little hot water beat the eggs very well add the flour the last thing if the batter is too stiff put in more milk rice waffles number one one cup boiled rice one pint milk two eggs lard the size of a walnut one half teaspoonful soda one teaspoonful cream tartar one teaspoonful salt flour for a thin batter rice waffles number two one quart milk one cup cold boiled rice three cups rice flour or enough for thin batter one tablespoonful melted butter three eggs one teaspoonful salt quick waffles one pint milk three eggs beaten very light one tablespoonful melted butter one teaspoonful cream tartar sifted in the flour one half teaspoonful soda one teaspoonful salt a heaping pint of flour or enough to make soft batter rice and cornmeal waffles one cup cold boiled rice one half cup white flour and same of cornmeal two eggs well whipped and milk to make soft batter one tablespoonful melted butter one half teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water one teaspoonful of salt beat the mixture smooth before baking be especially careful in greasing your irons for these waffles as for all which contain rice shortcake etc sunny bank shortcake for fruit two scant quarts flour two tablespoonfuls lard three tablespoonfuls butter two and one half cups sour or buttermilk loppered cream is still better two eggs well beaten one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water one teaspoonful salt chop up the shortening in the salted flour as for pastry add the eggs and soda to the milk put all together handling as little as may be roll lightly and quickly into two sheets the one intended for the upper crust half an inch thick the lower less than this lay the latter smoothly in a well-greased baking pan strew it thickly with raspberries blackberries or what is better yet huckleberries sprinkle four or five tablespoonfuls of sugar over these cover with the thicker crust and bake from twenty to twenty five minutes until nicely browned but not dried eat hot for breakfast with butter and powdered sugar if sweet milk be used add two teaspoonfuls cream tartar sifted into the dry flour it should be mixed as soft as can be rolled this shortcake is very nice made with the common black caps or wild raspberries strawberry shortcake one quart flour three tablespoonfuls butter one large cup sour cream or very rich loppered milk one egg four tablespoonfuls white sugar one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water one saltspoonful salt proceed in mixing and baking as with the huckleberry shortcake except that instead of putting the berries between the crust you lay one sheet of paste smoothly upon the other and bake until done while warm not hot separate these they will come apart easily just where they were joined lay upon the lower a thick coating several deep of strawberries sprinkle powdered sugar among and over them cover with the upper crust it is best to bake strawberry shortcake 
in round jelly cake tins or round pans a little deeper than these as they should be sent to table whole while the hot shortcake is generally cut into square slices and piled upon a plate strawberry shortcake is esteemed a great delicacy in its season it is eaten at tea cut into triangles like pie and sweet cream poured over each slice with more sugar sifted over it if desired scotch shortbread two pounds flour one pound best butter one half pound powdered sugar chop the flour and butter together having made the latter quite soft by setting it near the fire knead in the sugar roll into a sheet half an inch thick and cut in shapes with a cake cutter bake upon buttered paper in a shallow tin until crisp and of a delicate yellowish brown grandma's shortcake one pound flour dried and sifted one quarter pound butter and half as much lard one saltspoonful salt a pinch of soda thoroughly dissolved in just enough vinegar to cover it and well worked in enough ice water to enable you to roll out into paste half an inch thick cut into squares prick with a fork and bake light brown split butter and eat while hot easter buns hot cross three cups sweet milk one cup yeast flour to make thick batter set this as a sponge overnight in the morning add one cup sugar one half cup butter melted one half nutmeg one saltspoonful salt flour enough to roll out like biscuit knead well and set to rise for five hours roll half an inch thick cut into round cakes and lay in rows in a buttered baking pan when they have stood half an hour make a cross upon each with a knife and put instantly into the oven bake to a light brown and brush over with a feather or soft bit of rag dipped in the white of an egg beaten up stiff with white sugar these are the hot cross buns of the london cries plain buns are made as above but not rolled into a sheet knead them like biscuit dough taking care not to get it too stiff and after the five hour rising work in two or three handfuls of currants which have been previously well washed and dredged with flour mould with your hands into round balls set these closely together in a pan that they may form a loaf one yet many when baked let them stand nearly an hour or until very light then bake from half to three quarters of an hour until brown wash them over while hot with the beaten egg and sugar these are generally eaten cold or barely warm and are best the day they are baked end of section thirty five section thirty six of common sense in the household this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b common sense in the household a manual of practical housewifery by marion harlan cake use none but the best materials for making cake if you cannot afford to get good flour dry white sugar and the best family butter make up your mind to go without your cake and eat plain bread with a clear conscience there are no intermediate degrees of quality in eggs i believe i have said that somewhere else but it ought to be repeated just here they should be like caesar's wife above suspicion a tin whisk or whip is best for beating them the dover egg beater is the best in the market all kinds of cake are better for having the whites and yolks beaten separately beat the former in a large shallow dish until you can cut through the froth with a knife leaving as clear and distinct an incision as you would in a solid substance beat the yolks in an earthenware bowl until they cease to froth and thicken as if mixed with flour have the dishes cool not too cold it is hard to whip white stiff in a warm room stir the butter and sugar to a cream cakes often fail because this rule is not followed beat these as faithfully as you do the eggs warming the butter very slightly if hard use only a silver or wooden spoon in doing this do not use fresh and stale milk in the same cake it acts as disastrously as a piece of new cloth in an old garment sour milk makes a spongy cake sweet one closer in grain 
study the moods and tenses of your oven carefully before essaying a loaf of cake confine your early efforts to tea cakes and the like jelly cake baked in shallow flat tins is good practice during the novitiate keep the heat steady and as good on bottom as top streaks in cake are caused by unskillful mixing too rapid or unequal baking or a sudden decrease in heat before the cake is quite done don't delude yourself and maltreat those who are to eat your cake by trying to make soda do the whole or most of the duty of eggs others have tried it before with unfortunate results if curiosity tempt you to the experiment you had better allay it by buying some sponge cake at the corner bakery test whether a cake is done by running a clean straw into the thickest part it should come up clean do not leave the oven door open or change the cake from one oven to the other except in extreme cases if it hardens too fast on the top cover with paper it should rise to full height before the crust forms except for gingerbread use none but white sugar always sift the flour be accurate in your weights and measures there is no royal road to good fortune in cake making what is worth doing at all is worth doing well there is no disgrace in not having time to mix and bake a cake you may well be ashamed of yourself if you are too lazy or careless or hurried to beat your eggs cream your butter and sugar or measure your ingredients yet sometimes when you believe you have left no means untried to deserve success failure is your portion what then if the cake be unedible throw it away upon the first beggar boy who comes for broken meat and say nothing about it if streaky or burned cut out the best parts make them presentable as possible and give them to john and the children as a second best treat then keep up a brave heart and try again you may not satisfy yourself in a dozen trials you certainly will not if you never make another attempt cake should be wrapped in a thick cloth as soon as cool and kept in tight tin boxes do not cut more at a time than you are likely to use as it is not good when dry jelly cakes are best set away upon plates cloths wrapped closely about them and a box enclosing all cream your sugar and butter measure milk spices etc before beginning work for fruit cake it is best to prepare the materials the day before let your icing dry thoroughly before wrapping up the cake sift your flour before measuring as all the following receipts are for sifted flour icing whites of four eggs one pound powdered white sugar lemon vanilla or other seasoning break the whites into a broad clean cool dish throw a small handful of sugar upon them and begin whipping it in with slow steady strokes of the beater a few minutes later throw in more sugar and keep adding it at intervals until it is all used up beat perseveringly until the icing is of a smooth fine and firm texture half an hour's beating should be sufficient if done well if not stiff enough put in more sugar a little practice will teach you when your end is gained if you season with lemon juice allow in measuring your sugar for the additional liquid lemon juice or a very little tartaric acid whitens the icing use at least a quarter pound of sugar for each egg this method of making icing was taught me by a confectioner as easier and surer than the old plan of beating the eggs first and alone i have used no other since my first trial of it the frosting hardens in one-fourth the time required under the former plan and not more than half the time is consumed in the manufacture i have often iced a cake but two hours before it was cut and found the sugar dry all through pour the icing by the spoonful on the top of the cake and near the centre of the surface to be covered if the loaf is of such a shape that the liquid will settle of itself to its place it is best to let it do so if you spread it use a broad bladed knife dipped in cold water if it is as thick with sugar as it should be you need not lay on more than one coat you may set it in a moderate oven for three minutes if you are in great haste the better plan is to dry in a sunny window where the air can get at it and where there is no dust color icing yellow by putting the grated peel of a lemon or orange in a thin muslin bag straining a little juice through it and squeezing it hard into the egg and sugar strawberry juice colors a pretty pink as does also cranberry syrup 
almond icing whites of four eggs one pound sweet almonds one pound powdered sugar a little rose water blanch the almonds by pouring boiling water over them and stripping off the skins when dry pound them to a paste a few at a time in a wedgewood mortar moistening it with rose water as you go on when beaten fine and smooth beat gradually into icing prepared according to foregoing receipt put on very thick and when nearly dry cover with plain icing this is very fine or mingle a few bitter almonds with the sweet the blended flavor of these and the rose water is very pleasant martha's cake for jelly three eggs one cup sugar butter the size of an egg one cup flour one teaspoonful cream tartar sifted in the flour one half teaspoonful soda dissolved in a tablespoonful milk bake in jelly cake tins and spread when cold with fruit jelly this is although so simple and inexpensive an admirable foundation for the various kinds of jelly cream and meringue cake which are always popular it seldom fails and when well mixed and baked is very nice if prepared flour be used leave out soda and cream tartar mrs m s cupcake one cup butter two cups sugar three cups prepared flour four eggs one cup sweet milk bake in a loaf or as jelly cake cream cake two cups powdered sugar two-thirds cupful butter four eggs one half cupful milk one half teaspoonful soda one teaspoonful cream tartar three cups flour bake in thin layers as for jelly cake and spread between them when cold the following mixture one half pint of milk two small teaspoonfuls cornstarch one egg one teaspoonful vanilla one half cup sugar heat the milk to boiling and stir in the cornstarch wet with a little cold milk take out a little and mix gradually with the beaten egg and sugar return to the rest of the custard and boil stirring constantly until quite thick let it cool before you season and spread on cake season the icing also with vanilla jelly cake one pound sugar one pound flour one half pound butter six eggs one cup milk one half teaspoonful soda one teaspoonful cream tartar bake in shallow tins and when cold put jelly between coconut cake two cups powdered sugar one half cup butter three eggs one cup milk three cups flour two teaspoonfuls cream tartar one teaspoonful soda bake as for jelly cake filling one grated coconut to one half of this add whites of three eggs beaten to a froth and one cup of powdered sugar lay this between the layers mix with the other half of the grated coconut four tablespoonfuls powdered sugar and strew thickly on top of cake rosie's coconut cake two cups flour one and one half cup sugar one half cup butter one half cup sweet milk three eggs one teaspoonful cream tartar one quarter teaspoonful soda sift cream tartar and soda into the dry flour cream the butter and sugar add the beaten eggs then the milk lastly the flour bake in jelly cake tins grate one coconut mix with it a cup and a half of white sugar also the milk of the coconut set the mixture in the oven until the sugar melts then spread between the cakes loaf coconut cake one pound sugar one half pound butter six eggs one half pound prepared flour one pound finely grated coconut stirred lightly in the last thing bake immediately one two three four coconut cake one cup butter two cups sugar three cups flour four eggs whites only one cup milk one teaspoonful cream tartar one half teaspoonful soda sifted into the flour one half small coconut stirred in at the last coconut cakes small one coconut carefully skinned and grated milk of the same one and one half pound powdered sugar as much water as you have coconut milk whites of three eggs dissolve one pound of sugar in the milk and water stew until it becomes a ropey syrup and turn out into a buttered dish have ready the beaten white of egg with the remaining half pound of sugar whipped into it mix with this the grated coconut and little by little beating all the while the boiled syrup so soon as it cools sufficiently not to scald the eggs drop in tablespoonfuls upon buttered papers try one first and if it runs beat in more sugar bake in a very moderate oven 
watching to prevent scorching they should not be suffered to brown at all these will keep some time but are best quite fresh coconut cones one pound powdered sugar one half pound grated coconut whites of five eggs one teaspoonful best arrowroot whip the eggs as for icing adding the sugar as you go on until it will stand alone then beat in the coconut and arrowroot mold the mixture with your hands into small cones and set these far enough apart not to touch one another upon buttered paper in a baking pan bake in a very moderate oven lee cake ten eggs one pound sugar one half pound flour two lemons one orange beat whites and yolks separately add to all the yolks and the whites of seven eggs the sugar the rind of two lemons and juice of one bake as for jelly cake to the whites of three eggs allow a pound and a quarter of powdered sugar beat stiff as for icing take out enough to cover the top of the cake and set aside add to the rest the juice and half the grated rind of a large orange when the cake is nearly cold spread this between the layers beat into the icing reserved for the top a little lemon juice and if needed more sugar it should be thicker than that spread between the cakes you can make a very delightful variation of this elegant cake by spreading the orange icing between layers made according to the receipt given for martha's jelly cake several pages back and frosting with lemon meringue as above white mountain cake three cups sugar one cup butter one half cup sweet milk whites of ten eggs one half teaspoonful soda and one teaspoonful cream tartar sifted with the flour four cups flour flavor with essence of bitter almond icing whites of three eggs one pound powdered sugar flavor with lemon juice bake in jelly cake tins and fill with grated coconut sweetened with a quarter of its weight of powdered sugar or with icing such as is made for lee cake only flavored with lemon entirely french cake one pound sugar one half pound butter one pound currants washed clean and dredged with flour three cups flour four eggs nutmeg and cinnamon to taste one half teaspoonful soda dissolved in three tablespoonfuls milk lemon cake number one one pound sugar twelve eggs whites and yolks beaten separately three quarter pound flour juice and rind of a lemon icing flavored with same bake in small square tins and iced on sides and top these are sometimes called biscuits glace lemon cake number two one cup of butter packed two scant cups of sugar ten eggs yolks and whites beaten separately one small cup of milk juice and rind of a lemon one small teaspoonful soda flour to make tolerably thin batter a little over three cups of some qualities of flour four cups will be needed bake in a quick oven lady cake number one one half pound butter one pound flour eight eggs one teaspoonful cream tartar one half teaspoonful soda one pound sugar one half pint milk lady cake number two one pound sugar three quarter pound sifted flour six ounces butter the whipped whites of ten eggs flavor with bitter almond and bake in square not very deep tins flavor the frosting with vanilla the combination is very pleasant sister mag's cake two and a half cups powdered sugar three quarter cup of butter one cup sweet milk three cups flour four eggs one lemon juice and rind one small teaspoonful sugar bake in a square or oblong tin and frost with whites of two eggs beaten stiff with powdered sugar dover cake one pound flour one pound white sugar one half pound butter rubbed with the sugar to a very light cream six eggs one cup sweet milk one teaspoonful soda dissolved in vinegar one teaspoonful powdered cinnamon one tablespoonful rose water flavor the frosting with lemon juice chocolate cake two cups of sugar one cup butter the yolks of five eggs and whites of two one cup of milk three and one half cups flour one third teaspoonful soda one teaspoonful cream tartar sifted into the flour bake in jelly cake tins mixture for filling whites of three eggs one and one half cup sugar three tablespoonfuls grated chocolate one teaspoonful vanilla beat well together spread between the layers and on top of cake caramel cake three cups sugar one and one half cups butter 
one cup milk four and a half cups prepared flour five eggs caramel for filling one and one half cup brown sugar one half cup milk one cup molasses one teaspoonful butter one tablespoonful flour two tablespoonfuls cold water boil this mixture five minutes add half a cake baker's chocolate grated boil until it is the consistency of rich custard add a pinch of soda stir well and remove from fire when cold flavor with a large teaspoonful vanilla and spread between the layers of cake which should be baked as for jelly cake cover the top with the same and set in an open sunny window to dry the above quantity will make two large cakes marble cake light one cup white sugar one half cup butter one half cup milk whites of three eggs two cups prepared flour dark one half cup brown sugar one quarter cup butter one half cup molasses one quarter cup milk one half cup nutmeg one teaspoonful cinnamon one half teaspoonful allspice one half teaspoonful soda two cups flour yolks of three eggs butter your mold and put in the dark and light batter in alternate tablespoonfuls marbled cake one cup butter two cups powdered sugar three cups flour four eggs one cup sweet milk one half teaspoonful soda one teaspoonful cream tartar sifted with flour when the cake is mixed take out about a teacupful of the batter and stir into this a great spoonful of grated chocolate wet with a scant tablespoonful of milk fill your mold about an inch deep with the yellow batter and drop upon this in two or three places a spoonful of the dark mixture give to the brown spots a slight stir with the tip of your spoon spreading it in broken circles upon the lighter surface pour in more yellow batter then drop in the brown in the same manner as before proceeding in this order until all is used up when cut the cake will be found to be handsomely variegated or you may color the reserved cupful of batter with enough prepared cochineal to give it a fine pink tint and mix as you do the brown chocolate icing simple one fourth cake chocolate one half cup sweet milk one tablespoonful cornstarch one teaspoonful vanilla mix together these ingredients with the exception of the vanilla boil it two minutes after it has fairly come to a boil flavor and then sweeten to taste with powdered sugar taking care to make it sweet enough caramels chocolate two cups brown sugar one cup molasses one tablespoonful heaping of butter three tablespoonfuls flour boil twenty-five minutes then stir in half a pound of grated chocolate wet in half a cup of sweet milk and boil until it hardens on the spoon with which you must stir it frequently flavor with a teaspoonful of vanilla chocolate eclairs four eggs the weight of the eggs in sugar half their weight in flour one quarter teaspoonful soda one half teaspoonful cream tartar sifted well with the flour if you bake these often it will be worth your while to have made at the tinners a set of small tins about five inches long and two wide round at the bottom and kept firm by strips of tin connecting them if you cannot get these tack stiff writing paper into the same shape stitching each of the little canoes to its neighbor after the manner of a pontoon bridge have these made and buttered before you mix the cake put a spoonful of batter in each and bake in a steady oven when nearly cold cover the rounded side with a caramel icing made according to the foregoing receipt these little cakes are popular favorites and with a little practice can be easily and quickly made ellie's cake one cup of sugar one half cup of butter three eggs one half cup sweet milk two and one half cups prepared flour bake in jelly cake tins and fill with jelly or chocolate a simple and excellent cake sponge cake one teacup powdered sugar three eggs one half teaspoonful cream tartar one quarter teaspoonful soda one teacupful flour flavor with lemon half the juice and half the rind of one bake twenty minutes in shallow tins mrs m's sponge cake twelve eggs the weight of the eggs in sugar half their weight in flour one lemon juice and rind beat yolks and whites very light the sugar into the former when they are smooth and stiff next the juice and grated peel of the lemon then the beaten whites lastly the flour very lightly the lady from whom i had this admirable receipt 
was celebrated among her acquaintances for her beautiful and delicious sponge cake which should always be baked in tins like these she said to me once sportively or it does not taste just right the moulds were like a large brick in shape with almost perpendicular sides i instantly gave an order for a couple precisely like them and really fancied that cake baked in them was a little better than in any other form but you can hardly fail of success if you prepare yours precisely as i have directed bake in whatever shape you will be careful that your oven is steady and cover the cake with paper to prevent burning it is a good plan to line the pans in which sponge cake is baked with buttered paper fitted neatly to the sides and bottom pound cake number one one pound sugar one pound flour three-quarter pound butter nine eggs two teaspoonfuls cream tartar one teaspoonful soda cream the butter and sugar with great care beat the yolks and whites separately sift the cream tartar well through the flour add the flour last pound cake number two one pound flour one pound eggs one pound sugar three-quarter pound butter one glass brandy one nutmeg one teaspoonful mace cream half the flour with the butter and add brandy and spice beat the yolks until light add the sugar then the beaten whites and the rest of the flour alternately when this is thoroughly mixed put all together and beat steadily for half an hour if properly made and baked this is a splendid cake washington cake three cups sugar two cups butter five eggs one cup milk four cups flour two teaspoonfuls cream tartar one teaspoonful soda mix as usual and stir in at the last one half pound currants well washed and dredged one quarter pound raisins seeded and chopped fine then floured a handful of citron sliced fine cinnamon and nutmeg to taste fruit cake takes longer to bake than plain and the heat must be kept steady lincoln cake three quarter pound butter one pound sugar one pound flour six eggs two cups sour cream or milk one grated nutmeg one teaspoonful powdered cinnamon one quarter pound citron one tablespoonful rose water one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water and stirred into the milk just before adding the latter to the cake cream the butter and sugar put with them the yolks whipped light then the cream and spice next the flour then the rose water and a double handful of citron cut in slips and dredged finally the beaten whites of the eggs stir all well and bake in a loaf or in a card using a square shallow baking pan this is a good cake and keeps well black or wedding cake one pound powdered sugar one pound butter one pound flour twelve eggs one pound currants well washed and dredged one pound raisins seeded and chopped one half pound citron cut into slips one tablespoonful cinnamon two teaspoonfuls nutmeg one teaspoonful cloves one wine glass brandy cream the butter and sugar add the beaten yolks of the eggs and stir all well together before putting in half of the flour the spice should come next then the whipped whites stirred in alternately with the rest of the flour lastly the brandy the above quantity is for two large cakes bake at least two hours in deep tins lined with well buttered paper the icing should be laid on stiff and thickly this cake if kept in a cool dry place will not spoil in two months i have eaten wedding cake a year old test the cakes well and be sure they are quite done before taking them from the oven fruit cake plainer one pound powdered sugar one pound flour three quarter pound butter seven eggs one half pound currants washed picked over and dredged one half pound raisins seeded and chopped then dredged one quarter pound citron cut into slips one teaspoonful nutmeg one teaspoonful cinnamon one glass brandy cream butter and sugar add the beaten yolks then the spice and the whipped whites alternately with the flour the fruit and brandy last almond cake one pound powdered sugar one pound flour one quarter pound butter eight eggs one coffee cup full sweet almonds blanched by putting them into hot water and when stripped of their skins and perfectly cold beaten to a smooth paste in a wedgewood mortar with a little rose water and half a teaspoonful essence of bitter almonds beat whites and yolks separately stir butter and sugar to a cream add to this the yolks 
beat very hard before putting in the flour stir in the almond paste alternately with the whites put in the brandy last season the icing with rose water nut cake two cups sugar one cup butter three cups flour one cup cold water four eggs one teaspoonful soda two teaspoonfuls cream tartar two cupfuls kernels of hickory nuts or white walnuts carefully picked out and added last of all gold cake one pound sugar one half pound butter one pound flour yolks of ten eggs well beaten grated rind of one orange and juice of two lemons one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water cream the butter and sugar and stir in the yolks beat very hard for five minutes before putting in the flour the soda next and lastly the lemon juice in which the grated orange peel should have been steeped and strained out in a piece of thin muslin leaving the flavoring and coloring matter in the juice flavor the icing also with lemon silver cake one pound sugar three-quarter pound flour one half pound butter whites of ten eggs whipped very stiff one large teaspoonful essence bitter almonds cream butter and sugar put next the whites of the eggs then the flour lastly the flavoring make gold and silver cake on the same day bake them in tins of corresponding size and lay them in alternate slices in the cake basket flavor the icing of silver cake with rose water almond macaroons prepare the almonds the day before you make the cakes by blanching them in boiling water stripping off the skins and pounding them when perfectly cold a few at a time in a wedgewood mortar adding from time to time a little rose water when beaten to a smooth paste stir in to a pound of the sweet almonds a generous tablespoonful of essence of bitter almonds cover closely and set away in a cold place until the morrow then to a pound of the nuts allow one pound powdered sugar the beaten whites of eight eggs one teaspoonful nutmeg one teaspoonful arrowroot stir the sugar and white of egg lightly together then whip in gradually the almond paste line a broad baking pan with buttered white paper drop upon this spoonfuls of the mixture at such distances apart as shall prevent their running together sift powdered sugar thickly upon each and bake in a quick oven to a delicate brown try the mixture first to make sure it is of the right consistency and if the macaroons run into irregular shapes beat in more sugar this will hardly happen however if the mixture is already well beaten huckleberry cake one cup butter two cups sugar three cups flour five eggs one cup sweet milk one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water one teaspoonful nutmeg and the same of cinnamon one quart ripe fresh huckleberries thickly dredged with flour stir the butter and sugar to a cream add the beaten yolks then the milk the flour and spice the whites whipped stiff and the soda at the last stir in the huckleberries with a wooden spoon or paddle not to bruise them bake in a loaf or card in a moderate but steady oven until a straw comes out clean from the thickest part this is a delicious cake and deserves to be better known it is best on the second day after baking cornstarch cake two cups sugar and one cup butter rubbed to a cream one cup milk two cups flour three eggs whites and yolks beaten separately one half cup cornstarch two teaspoonfuls cream tartar sifted well through the flour one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water sift the cornstarch with the flour and add the last thing bake in small tins and eat while fresh they dry in two or three days and become insipid but are very nice for twenty-four hours after they are baked white cake one cup butter two cups sugar one cup sweet milk whites of five eggs three cups prepared flour End of section 36。section 37 of common sense in the household。this is a librivox recording。all librivox recordings are in the public domain。for more information or to volunteer。please visit librivox.org。recording by betty b。common sense in the household。a manual of practical housewifery。by marion harlan cookies etc mrs b s cookies six eggs whites and yolks separately one cup butter three cups sugar 
flour to make batter just stiff enough to be molded with well floured hands flavor with lemon make into round cakes and bake in a quick oven small sugar cakes one heaping teacup of sugar three quarter teacup of butter one quarter teacup sweet milk two eggs well beaten two teaspoonfuls cream tartar one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water flour sufficient to enable you to roll out the dough one saltspoonful salt nutmeg and cinnamon to taste cut in round cakes and bake quickly new year's cakes very nice one and one quarter pound sugar one pound butter one half pint cold water three eggs three pounds flour one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water four tablespoonfuls caraway seed sprinkled through the flour rub the butter or what is better chop it up in the flour dissolve the sugar in the water mix all well with the beaten eggs cut in square cakes or with oval mould and bake quickly mother's cookies one cup butter two cups sugar three eggs well beaten one quarter teaspoonful soda dissolved in boiling water one teaspoonful nutmeg one teaspoonful cloves flour to make soft dough just stiff enough to roll out try two cups to begin with working it in gradually cut in round cakes stick a raisin or currant in the top of each and bake quickly coriander cookies one cup butter three cups sugar one cup loppered milk or cream four eggs six cups flour or just enough to stiffen into a rollable paste two tablespoonfuls coriander seed ground or beaten one tablespoonful soda dissolved in boiling water if you use sweet milk add two teaspoonfuls cream tartar you may substitute caraway for the coriander seed rice flour cookies one half pound ground rice one pound rice flour dried and sifted one pound powdered sugar one half pound butter four eggs juice and half the grated rind of a lemon one tablespoonful orange flour water beat yolks and whites very light then put the sugar with the yolks beat ten minutes add the orange flour water and lemon lastly the flour and whites alternately beat the mixture half an hour bake immediately in patty pans eat while fresh molasses cookies good one cup butter two cups molasses one teaspoonful cloves one tablespoonful ginger sufficient flour to make soft dough mold with the hands into small cakes and bake in a steady rather than quick oven as they are apt to burn ginger snaps number one one cup butter one cup molasses one cup sugar three-quarter cup sweet milk one teaspoonful saleratus two teaspoonfuls ginger flour for tolerably stiff dough ginger snaps number two one large cup butter and lard mixed one coffee cup sugar one cup molasses one half cup water one tablespoonful ginger one tablespoonful cinnamon one teaspoonful cloves one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water flour for pretty stiff dough roll out rather thinner than sugar cake and bake quickly these ginger snaps will keep for weeks if locked up ginger snaps number three one pint molasses one teacup sugar one teaspoonful ginger one teaspoonful allspice one cup butter five cups flour roll thin and cut into small cakes bake in quick oven aunt margaret's jumbles one cup butter two cups sugar one teacup milk five eggs one half teaspoonful soda dissolved in boiling water one teaspoonful nutmeg sufficient flour to make soft dough roll out cut into shapes and sift sugar over them before they go into the oven lemon jumbles one egg one teacupful sugar one half teacupful butter three teaspoonfuls milk one teaspoonful cream tartar one half teaspoonful soda two small lemons juice of two and grated rind of one mix rather stiff roll and cut out with cake cutter ring jumbles one pound butter one pound sugar four eggs one pound flour or enough to make out a soft dough wine glass small rose water cream the butter and sugar add the beaten yolks then the rose water next half the flour lastly the whites stirred in very lightly 
alternately with the remaining flour have ready a pan broad and shallow lined on the bottom with buttered paper with a tablespoon form regular rings of the dough upon this leaving a hole in the centre of each bake quickly and sift fine sugar over them as soon as they are done you may substitute lemon or vanilla for the rose water mrs m s jumbles one cup sugar one cup butter one half cup sour cream one egg one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water nutmeg to taste flour for soft dough bake in rings as directed in previous receipt almond jumbles one pound sugar one half pound flour one quarter pound butter one teacup loppered milk five eggs two tablespoonfuls rose water three quarter pound almonds blanched and chopped small but not pounded one teaspoonful soda dissolved in boiling water cream butter and sugar stir in the beaten yolks the milk the flour and the rose water the almonds lastly the beaten whites very lightly and quickly drop in rings or round cakes upon buttered paper and bake immediately you may substitute grated coconut or the chopped kernels of white walnuts for the almonds in which case add a little salt currant cakes one pound flour one half pound butter three quarter pound sugar four eggs one half pound currants well washed and dredged one half teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water one half lemon grated rind and juice one teaspoonful cinnamon drop from a spoon upon well buttered paper lining a baking pan bake quickly drop sponge cakes one half pound powdered sugar one quarter pound flour four eggs yolks and whites separate and beaten very stiff one lemon all the juice and half the grated rind drop upon buttered paper not too near together try one and if it runs beat the mixture some minutes longer hard adding a very little flour your oven should be very quick and the cakes a delicate yellow brown ladies fingers are mixed like drop sponge cakes but disposed upon the paper in long narrow cakes they are very nice dipped in chocolate icing or caramel aunt margaret's crullers one pound butter one and one half pound powdered sugar twelve eggs mace and nutmeg to taste flour to roll out stiff this is for a large quantity of crullers roll out in a thin sheet cut into shapes with a jagging iron and fry in plenty of boiling lard test the heat first by dropping in one it should rise almost instantly to the surface crullers and doughnuts soak in fat at the bottom of the kettle these should be a fine yellow the most delicious and the nicest looking crullers i have ever seen were made by the dear old lady from whom i had this receipt they were as pretty and perfect a picture of their kind as she was of hers crullers are better the second day than the first if the fat becomes so hot that the crullers brown before they puff out to their full dimensions take the kettle from the fire for a few minutes have enough cut out before you begin to fry them to keep a good supply all the while on the fire if you undertake the task alone cut out all before cooking one katie's crullers one pound sugar one quarter pound butter six eggs one tablespoonful sweet milk one small teaspoonful soda one nutmeg sufficient flour to roll out stiff mother's crullers one and one half teacup sugar one half teacup sour cream or milk one third teacup butter one egg one small teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water flour to roll out a tolerably stiff paste annie's crullers two cups sugar one cup butter two eggs two cups sour milk one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water flour to roll out tolerably stiff risen doughnuts one pound butter one and three quarter pound sugar one quart sweet milk four eggs one large cup yeast one tablespoonful mace or nutmeg two teaspoonful cinnamon flour to make all stiff as bread dough one teaspoonful salt cream the butter and sugar add the milk yeast and one quart and a pint of flour set to rise over night in the morning beat the eggs very light and stir into the batter with the spice and rest of the flour set to rise three hours or until light roll into a pretty thick sheet cut out and fry in boiling lard 
sift powdered sugar over them while hot quick doughnuts one cup butter two cups sugar four eggs one cup sour milk or cream one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water one teaspoonful nutmeg one half teaspoonful cinnamon flour to roll out in pretty soft dough cut into shapes and fry in hot lard soft gingerbread one cup butter one cup molasses one cup sugar one cup sour or buttermilk one teaspoonful soda dissolved in boiling water one tablespoonful ginger one teaspoonful cinnamon two eggs about five cups of flour enough to make it thick as cupcake batter perhaps a trifle thicker work in four cups first and add very cautiously stir butter sugar molasses and spice together to a light cream set them on the range until slightly warm beat the eggs light add the milk to the warmed mixture then the eggs the soda and lastly the flour beat very hard ten minutes and bake at once in a loaf or in small tins half a pound raisins seeded and cut in half will improve this excellent gingerbread dredge them well before putting them in add them at the last sponge gingerbread eggless five cups flour one heaping tablespoonful butter one cup molasses one cup sugar one cup milk sour is best two teaspoonfuls saleratus not soda dissolved in hot water two teaspoonfuls ginger one teaspoonful cinnamon mix the molasses sugar butter and spice together warm them slightly and beat until they are lighter in color by many degrees than when you began add the milk then the saleratus and having mixed all well put in the flour beat very hard five minutes and bake in a broad shallow pan or in pate tins half a pound of seeded raisins cut in pieces will be a pleasant addition try this gingerbread warm for tea or luncheon with a cup of hot chocolate to accompany it and you will soon repeat the experiment plain gingerbread two cups molasses one half cup lard one half cup butter two tablespoonfuls soda dissolved in hot water two tablespoonfuls ginger one cup sour milk thicken with flour to a soft dough warm the molasses lard butter and ginger and beat them ten minutes before adding the milk soda and flour roll out cut into shapes and bake in a quick but not too hot oven keep in a tight tin box brush over with white of egg while hot gingerbread loaf number one one cup butter one cup molasses one cup sugar one half cup cold water one tablespoonful ginger one teaspoonful cinnamon one teaspoonful soda dissolved in boiling water flour to make stiff batter melt the butter slightly warm the molasses spice and sugar and beat together ten minutes then put in the water soda and flour stir very hard and bake in three small loaves brush them over with syrup while hot and eat fresh loaf gingerbread number two one cup butter two cups molasses one tablespoonful ginger teaspoonful saleratus two eggs very well beaten one cup milk sweet or sour if sour heap your spoon with saleratus flour to the consistency of pound cake spiced gingerbread one pound flour one pound sugar one eighth pound butter five eggs one half teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water one teaspoonful cream tartar three tablespoonfuls sweet milk one large tablespoonful ginger one teaspoonful cloves one teaspoonful nutmeg one teaspoonful cinnamon cream the sugar and butter stir in the beaten yolks the milk and spice the soda and when these are well mixed the flour bake in two square or round loaves sugar gingerbread one cup of butter two cups of sugar one cup sour cream or milk three eggs one teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water two teaspoonfuls ginger one teaspoonful cinnamon five cups of flour or enough to roll out soft cut in shapes brush over with white of egg while hot and bake bread cake on baking day take from your dough after its second rising two cups risen dough have ready also two cups white sugar one cup butter creamed with the sugar three eggs one even teaspoonful soda 
dissolved in hot water two tablespoonfuls sweet milk cream is better one half pound currants well washed and dredged one teaspoonful nutmeg one teaspoonful cloves beat the yolks very light add the creamed butter and sugar the spice milk soda and dough stir until all are well mixed put in the beaten whites lastly the fruit beat hard five minutes let it rise twenty minutes in two well buttered pans and bake half an hour or until done fruit gingerbread two pounds flour three quarter pound butter one pound sugar one pound raisins seeded and chopped one pound currants well washed two cups molasses one half cup sour cream six eggs one heaping teaspoonful soda dissolved in hot water two tablespoonfuls ginger one teaspoonful cinnamon one teaspoonful cloves cream the butter and sugar warm the molasses slightly and beat these together then the beaten yolks next the milk and spice the soda the flour and whites well whipped lastly the fruit which must be thickly dredged beat well before baking a little citron shred fine is an improvement bake in two broad pans in a moderate oven this cake will keep a long time sweet wafers six eggs one pint flour two ounces melted butter one and one half cup powdered sugar one cup milk one teaspoonful nutmeg beat whites and yolks separately and very stiff rub the sugar and butter together and work in first the yolks then the milk then the flour and whites bake in well buttered wafer or waffle irons very quickly browning as little as possible roll them while hot upon a smooth round stick not larger than your little finger slipping it out carefully when the cake takes the right shape these little cakes are an acceptable addition to any tea or supper table and look well among fancy cakes in a basket boston cream cakes one half pound butter three quarter pound flour eight eggs one pint water stir the butter into the water which should be warm set it on the fire in a saucepan and slowly bring to a boil stirring it often when it boils put in the flour boil one minute stirring all the while take from the fire turn into a deep dish and let it cool beat the eggs very light and whip into this cooled paste first the yolks then the whites drop in great spoonfuls upon buttered paper taking care not to let them touch or run into each other and bake ten minutes cream for filling one quart milk four tablespoonfuls cornstarch two eggs two cups sugar wet the cornstarch with enough milk to work it into a smooth paste boil the rest of the milk beat the eggs add the sugar and cornstarch to these and so soon as the milk boils pour in the mixture gradually stirring all the time until smooth and thick drop in a teaspoonful of butter and when this is mixed in set the custard aside to cool then add vanilla or lemon seasoning pass a sharp knife lightly around the puffs split them and fill with the mixture the best cream cakes i have ever tasted were made by this somewhat odd receipt try it nougat one pound sweet almonds three quarter pound fine white sugar one tablespoonful rose water blanch the almonds in boiling water when stripped of their skins throw them into ice water for five minutes take them out and dry between two cloths shave with a small knife into thin slips put them in a slow oven until they are very slightly colored meanwhile melt the sugar without adding water in a farina kettle over the fire stirring it all the while when it bubbles up and is quite melted take off the kettle and instantly stir in the hot almonds have ready a tin pan or mould well buttered and slightly warmed pour in the nougat press it thin and flat to the bottom of the pan if you mean to cut it into strips to all sides of the mould if you intend to fill it with syllabub or macaroons let it cool in the mould for the latter purpose withdrawing it carefully when you want it if you cut it up do it while it is still warm not hot the syrup should be a bright yellow before putting in the almonds. End of section 37。section 38 of common sense in the household。this is a LibriVox recording。all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain。
for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by betty b common sense in the household a manual of practical housewifery by marion harlan pies use none but the best butter in pastry cooking butter is a good thing said a grave epicure to me once an admirable thing in its place which is in the soap fat kettle or upon wagon wheels it is certainly out of place in biscuits cake or in any substance destined for human palates and stomachs it is never less in place than in pastry never betrays its vileness more surely and odiously butter intended for pastry should be washed carefully in several clear cold waters and kneaded while under water to extract the salt then wipe it dry and lay it in a cold place until you are ready to work it in keep cool is a cardinal motto for pastry makers a marble slab is a good thing to roll out paste upon next to this the best article is a clean board of hardwood which is never used for any other purpose it is harder to make good pastry in warm weather than cold on account of the tendency of the butter to oil and thus render the crust heavy and solid few people know what really good pastry is fewer still can make it it has no inevitable resemblance either to putty or leather it is light crisp flaky goodly to behold goodlier to the taste pork fat and pies kill more people yearly in the united states than do liquor and tobacco said a popular lecturer upon conservatism perhaps so but i incline to the belief that bad pastry is answerable for a vast majority of the murders not that i recommend pies of any description as healthful daily food least of all for children but since they are eaten freely all over our land let us make them as wholesome and palatable as possible family pie crust number one one quart flour one third pound lard sweet and firm one half pound butter one small teacup ice water sift the flour into a deep wooden bowl with a broad bladed knife or a small keen chopper cut up the lard into the flour until it is fine as dust wet with ice water into a stiff dough working it with a wooden spoon until obliged to make it into a roll or ball with your hands flour these and knead the paste into shape with as few strokes as will affect your end lay the lump upon a floured kneading board and roll it out into a thin sheet always rolling from you with quick light action when thin enough stick bits of butter in regular close rows all over the sheet using a knife for this purpose rather than your hands roll up the paste into close folds as you would a sheet of music flatten that your rolling pin can take hold and roll out again as thin as before baste roll up and then out until your butter is gone it is a good plan to sprinkle the inside of each sheet with a little flour after buttering it before making it into a roll finally make out your crust butter your pie plates lay the paste lightly within them cut it off evenly about the edges after fitting it neatly gather up the scraps left from cutting and make into another sheet if the pies are to have a top crust fill the plates with fruit or whatever you have ready lay the paste on this cut it to fit and press down the edges to prevent the escape of the juice with a spoon knife or jagging iron ornamenting it in a regular figure bake in a moderate oven until a light brown be particularly careful to have your heat as great at the bottom as at the top or the lower crust will be clammy and raw pastry is always best when fresh it is well when you can spare the time to lay the roll when all the butter is used up in a very cold place for fifteen minutes or so before rolling it into crust indeed some good housewives let it stand on the ice an hour in hot weather they say it tends to make it flaky as well as firm touch as little with your hands as may be practicable family pie crust number two one pound flour three-quarter pound butter one teaspoonful soda two teaspoonfuls cream tartar ice water to make into a stiff dough chop half the butter into the flour until it looks like yellow sand sift the soda and cream tartar with the flour 
passing it through the sieve twice to make sure it is well mixed work with ice water into stiff dough roll into a thin sheet baste with one-third the remaining butter fold up closely into a long roll flatten and re-roll then baste again repeat this operation three times until the butter is gone when make out your crust this is an easy and sure receipt and the paste very fine french puff paste one pound flour three-quarter pound butter one egg use the yolk only ice water chop half the butter into the flour stir the beaten egg into half a cup ice water and work the flour into a stiff dough roll out thin baste with one-third the remaining butter fold closely roll out again and so on until the butter is used up roll very thin and set the last folded roll in a very cold place ten or fifteen minutes before making out the crust wash with beaten egg while hot this paste is very nice for oyster pâtés as well as for fruit pies puff paste one pint flour one half pound butter one egg well beaten use the yolk only one gill ice water mix the flour a tablespoonful of butter the beaten egg and ice water into a paste with a wooden spoon flour your pastry board and roll out the crust very thin put the rest of the butter when you have washed it in the centre of this sheet in a flat cake turn the four corners of the paste over it and roll out carefully not to break the paste should it give way flour the spot that it may not stick to the roller when very thin sprinkle lightly with flour fold up and roll out four times more set in a cool place for an hour roll out again and cut into tartlet shells or top crust for pies the bottom crust of pies may often be made of plainer pastry than the upper transparent crust very rich one pound flour one pound butter one egg the yolk only wash the butter dry and then melt it in a vessel set in another of boiling water stirring gently all the while to prevent oiling take off the salty scum from the top and when almost cold beat up the butter little by little with the egg which should be previously whipped light when these are thoroughly incorporated work in the flour roll out twice sprinkling lightly with flour before you fold it up let it stand folded five minutes in a cold place and make out for tartlets or pâtés it is not suitable for large pies bake before you fill them and brush over with a beaten egg while hot mince pies number one four pounds meat i e two-thirds apple one-third meat three pounds raisins seeded and chopped two pounds currants washed picked over and dried three quarts cider one pint brandy one heaping teaspoonful cinnamon one heaping teaspoonful nutmeg the same of cloves and half the quantity of mace make very sweet with brown sugar the meat should be a good piece of lean beef boiled the day before it is needed half a pound of raw suet chopped fine may be added chop the meat clean out bits of skin and gristle and mix with twice the quantity of fine juicy apples also chopped then put in the fruit next the sugar and spice lastly the liquor mix very thoroughly cover closely and let all stand together for twenty-four hours before making the pies mince pies number two two pounds lean fresh beef boiled and when cold chopped fine one pound beef suet cleared of strings and minced to powder five pounds apples pared and chopped two pounds raisins seeded and chopped one pound sultana raisins washed and picked over two pounds currants washed and carefully picked over three-quarter pound citron cut up fine two tablespoonfuls cinnamon one teaspoonful powdered nutmeg two tablespoonfuls mace one tablespoonful cloves one tablespoonful allspice one tablespoonful fine salt two and one half pounds brown sugar one quart brown sherry one pint best brandy mincemeat made by this receipt will keep all winter in a cool place keep in stone jars tied over with double covers add a little more liquor if it should dry out when you make up a batch of pies let the mixture stand at least twenty-four hours after it is made before it is used lay strips of pastry notched with a jagging iron in a cross-bar pattern 
upon the pie instead of a top crust i take this opportunity of warning the innocent reader against placing any confidence whatever in dried currants i years ago gave over trying to guess who put the dirt in them it is always there gravel stones lurking under a specious coating of curranty looking paste to crucify grown people's nerves and children's teeth mould that changes to mud in the mouth twigs that prick the throat not to mention the legs wings and bodies of tropical insects a curious study to one interested in the entomology of zante it is all dirt although sold to us at current prices wash your currants therefore first in warm water rolling up your sleeves and rubbing the conglomerate masses apart as you would scrub a muddy garment drain them in a colander and pass them through three more waters cold now but cleansing then spread them upon a large dish and enter seriously upon your geological and entomological researches sultanas sweet and seedless are nearly as troublesome but their specialty is more harmless being stickiness and stems nevertheless since john has a weakness for mince pies i never saw an undyspeptic man who had not it is worth your while to make them having this consolation that if you are wise you need not engage in the manufacture oftener than once or at most twice a winter but let the children taste them sparingly and never at night if you value their health and your own sound slumbers apple mincemeat two pounds apples pared and chopped three-quarter pound beef suet cleared of strings and powdered one pound currants one half pound raisins seeded and chopped one half pound sultana raisins one quarter pound citron cut into shreds one lemon juice and grated rind one tablespoonful cinnamon one teaspoonful cloves one teaspoonful mace one tablespoonful allspice two pounds brown sugar half pint best brandy a glass of wine two teaspoonfuls salt pack down in a stone jar with close cover and keep in a cool place mock mincemeat six soda crackers rolled fine two cups cold water one cup molasses one cup brown sugar one cup sour cider one and one half cup melted butter one cup raisins seeded and chopped one cup currants two eggs beaten light one tablespoonful cinnamon and allspice mixed one teaspoonful nutmeg one teaspoonful cloves one teaspoonful salt one teaspoonful black pepper one wine glass of brandy mince pie in summer is a pleasant rarity was the remark of a party of hungry travellers in semi-apology for the fact that every plate made a return journey to the comely landlady who was dispensing generous triangles of pie she smiled gratifiedly but said nothing in reply until when the gentlemen had strolled off to the woods with their cigars she came upon me seated alone on the piazza and grew confidential under the influence of that sort of free masonic understanding housekeepers have with one another almost at sight i had to laugh said the good soul when they praised my mince pies they're healthfuller in summer time than the real thing i took down the receipt on the spot from her lips if any one doubts the merits of the counterfeit let her do as i did try it apple pie number one pare core and slice ripe tart winter apples pippins greenings or baldwins line your dish with a good crust put in a layer of fruit then sprinkle light brown sugar thickly over it scatter half a dozen whole cloves upon this lay on more apples and so on until the dish is well filled cover with crust and bake sift powdered sugar over the top before sending to table apple pie number two stew green or ripe apples when you have pared them and cored them mash to a smooth compote sweeten to taste and while hot stir in a teaspoonful butter for each pie season with nutmeg when cool fill your crust and either cross-bar the top with strips of paste or bake without cover eat cold with powdered sugar strewed over it apple custard pie three cups stewed apple nearly a cup white sugar six eggs one quart milk make the stewed apple very sweet and let it cool beat the eggs light and mix the yolks well with the apple seasoning with nutmeg only then stir in gradually the milk 
beating as you go on lastly add the whites fill your crust and bake without cover apple meringue pies stew and sweeten ripe juicy apples when you have pared and sliced them mash smooth and season with nutmeg if you like the flavor stew some lemon peel with the apple and remove when cold fill your crust and bake until just done spread over the apple a thick meringue made by whipping to a stiff froth the whites of three eggs for each pie sweetening with a tablespoonful of powdered sugar for each egg flavor this with rose water or vanilla beat until it will stand alone and cover the pie three-quarters of an inch thick set back in the oven until the meringue is well set should it color too darkly sift powdered sugar over it when cold eat cold they are very fine peach pies are even more delicious made in this manner pippin pies twelve fine ripe pippins pared and grated one pound white sugar one half pound butter six eggs whites and yolks separately beaten one lemon grated peel and juice with nutmeg cream the butter and sugar stir in the beaten yolks then the lemon nutmeg and apple lastly the whites very lightly bake in paste with cross bars of the same on top pumpkin pie number one one quart stewed pumpkin pressed through a sieve nine eggs whites and yolks beaten separately two scant quarts milk one teaspoonful mace one teaspoonful cinnamon and the same of nutmeg one and one half cup white sugar or very light brown beat all well together and bake in crust without cover pumpkin pie number two one quart pumpkin stewed and strained one quart milk one cup sugar seven eggs beaten very light one teaspoonful ginger and same of mace and cinnamon each squash pie is made precisely like pumpkin pie except that being less rich it requires one more egg for each pie sweet potato pie number one parboil skin and slice crosswise firm sweet potatoes line a dish with paste put in a layer of sliced potato sprinkle thickly with sugar scatter among them a few whole cloves and cover with more slices fill the dish in this order put a tablespoonful of melted butter in each pie pour in a little water cover with crust and bake eat cold sweet potato pie number two one pound mealy sweet potatoes the firm yellow ones are best one half cup butter three quarter cup white sugar one tablespoonful cinnamon one teaspoonful nutmeg four eggs whites and yolks beaten separately one cup of milk one lemon juice and rind and glass of brandy parboil the potatoes and grate them when quite cold if grated hot they are sticky and heavy cream the butter and sugar add the yolk the spice and lemon beat the potato in by degrees and until all is light then the milk then the brandy and stir in the whites bake in dishes lined with good paste without cover you may make a pudding of this by baking in a deep dish well buttered without paste cool before eating irish potato pie or pudding one pound mashed potato rubbed through a colander one half pound butter creamed with the sugar six eggs whites and yolks separately one lemon squeezed into the potato while hot one cup of milk one teaspoonful nutmeg and same of mace two cups white sugar mix as you do sweet potato pudding and bake in open shells of paste to be eaten cold lemon pie or transparent pudding one half pound butter one pound sugar six eggs whites and yolks separately juice of one lemon grated rind of two one nutmeg half glass brandy cream butter and sugar beat in the yolks the lemon spice and brandy stirring in the whites at the last bacon pie crust open you may if you wish to have these very nice beat up the whites of but four eggs in the mixture and whip the whites of four more into a meringue with four tablespoonfuls sugar and a little lemon juice to spread over the top of each pie eat cold they are very nice baked in patty pans lemon pie number two one apple chopped fine one egg one lemon chop the inside very fine and grate the rind one cup sugar butter the size of a walnut this is just enough for one pie take the thick white rind off the lemon before you chop it take out the seeds carefully lemon cream pie 
one teacup powdered sugar one tablespoonful butter one egg one lemon juice and grated rind removing the seeds with care one teacupful boiling water one tablespoonful cornstarch dissolved in cold water stir the cornstarch into the water cream the butter and sugar and pour over them the hot mixture when quite cool add lemon and the beaten egg take the inner rind off the lemon and mince very small bake in open shell lemon pie number three three eggs one great spoonful butter three-quarter cup white sugar juice and grated peel of lemon bake in open shells of paste cream the sugar and butter stir in the beaten yolks and the lemon and bake beat the whites to a stiff meringue with three tablespoonfuls powdered sugar and a little rose water when the pies are done take from the oven just long enough to spread the meringue over the top and set back for three minutes this mixture is enough for two small or one good sized pie eat cold orange pie three eggs three-quarter cup of white sugar two tablespoonfuls butter one orange juice and half the grated rind one half lemon juice and grated peel nutmeg to taste cream the butter and sugar beating in the orange and lemon until very light add the beaten yolks fill two pastry shells and bake beat the whites stiff with two tablespoonfuls powdered sugar and when the pies are done spread over them returning to the oven for three or four minutes lemon tart one cup sugar two lemons all the juice and a teaspoonful grated peel one teaspoonful cornstarch dissolved in a little cold water a dozen raisins stewed cut in two and seeded beat up well and bake with upper and lower crust orange tartlets two fine havana oranges juice of both and grated peel of one three-quarter cup of sugar one half cup if the oranges are very sweet one tablespoonful of butter one half lemon juice only to wet one teaspoonful cornstarch beat all well together and bake in tartlet shells without cover chocolate tarts four eggs whites and yolks one half cake of baker's chocolate grated one tablespoonful cornstarch dissolved in water three tablespoonfuls milk four tablespoonfuls white sugar two teaspoonfuls vanilla one saltspoonful salt one half teaspoonful cinnamon one teaspoonful butter melted rub the chocolate smooth in the milk and heat to boiling over the fire then stir in the cornstarch stir five minutes until well thickened remove from the fire and pour into a bowl beat all the yolks and the whites of two eggs well with the sugar and when the chocolate mixture is almost cold put all together with the flavoring and stir until light bake in open shells of pastry when done cover with a meringue made of the whites of two eggs and two tablespoonfuls of sugar flavored with a teaspoonful of lemon juice eat cold these are nice for tea baked in patty pans cocoa nut pie number one one half pound grated coconut three quarter pound white sugar powdered six ounces butter five eggs the whites only one glass white wine two tablespoonfuls rose water one tablespoonful nutmeg cream the butter and sugar and when well mixed beat very light with the wine and rose water add the coconut with as little and as light beating as possible finally whip in the stiffened whites of the eggs with a few skillful strokes and bake at once in open shells eat cold with powdered sugar sifted over them these are very pretty and delightful pies coconut pie number two one pound grated coconut one half pound butter one half pound powdered sugar one glass of brandy two teaspoonfuls lemon juice four eggs white and yolks separated two teaspoonfuls vanilla rub the butter and sugar together beat lightly with the brandy and lemon juice stir in the beaten yolks lastly the coconut and the whites alternately bake in open shells eat cold with powdered sugar sifted over it coconut custard pie one pound coconut grated one half pound powdered sugar one quart milk unskimmed six eggs beaten to a froth one teaspoonful nutmeg two teaspoonfuls vanilla or rose water boil the milk take it from the fire and whip in gradually the beaten eggs when nearly cold season add the coconut and pour into paste shells do not boil the egg and milk together 
bake twenty minutes some put the custard quite raw into the pie dishes but the cocoa nut is apt in that case to settle at the bottom you may however pour the raw mixture into cups and bake by setting in a pan of boiling water stirring well once as they begin to warm this is cocoa nut cup custard and is much liked chocolate custard pie one quarter cake of baker's chocolate grated one pint boiling water six eggs one quart milk one half cup white sugar two teaspoonfuls vanilla dissolve the chocolate in a very little milk stir into the boiling water and boil three minutes when nearly cold beat up with this the yolks of all the eggs and the whites of three stir this mixture into the milk season and pour into shells of good paste when the custard is set but not more than half done spread over it the whites whipped to a froth with two tablespoonfuls sugar you may bake these custards without paste in a pudding dish or cup set in boiling water corn starch custard pie six eggs three pints milk six tablespoonfuls white sugar two tablespoonfuls corn starch two teaspoonfuls essence bitter almonds boil the milk stir in the corn starch wet in a little cold milk and boil one minute when nearly cold stir in the sugar the yolks of all the eggs and the whites of two flavor and pour into your paste shells whip the remaining whites to a meringue with two tablespoonfuls white sugar and a teaspoonful of vanilla and when the custard is just set draw your pies to the edge of the oven to spread this over them do it quickly lest the custard fall by exposure to the air you may bake this as a pudding by omitting the pastry eat cold if you have not cornstarch substitute arrowroot or rice flour custard pie four eggs one quart of milk four tablespoonfuls white sugar flavor with vanilla or other essence beat the yolks and sugar light and mix with the milk flavor whip in the whites which should be already a stiff froth mix well and pour into shells grate nutmeg upon the top bake this as cup custard or a custard pudding in cups or a deep dish set in a pan of boiling water peach pie peel stone and slice the peaches line a pie plate with a good crust and lay in your fruit sprinkling sugar liberally over them in proportion to their sweetness very ripe peaches require comparatively little allow three peach kernels chopped fine to each pie pour in a very little water and bake with an upper crust or with cross bars of paste across the top some simply pare the peaches and put in whole packing them well and sweetening freely in this case they should be covered entirely with crust for one of the most delightful pies that can be made of any fruit look for apple meringue pie and substitute peaches peach meringue pie may be made in winter from canned peaches cherry pie line the dish with a good crust and fill with ripe cherries regulating the quantity of sugar you scatter over them by their sweetness cover and bake eat cold with white sugar sifted over the top blackberry raspberry and plum pies are made in the same manner currant and raspberry tart to three cups of currants allow one of raspberries mix well together before you fill the crust and sweeten abundantly cover with crust and bake eat cold with white sugar sifted over it currant tart is made as above with more sugar the most common fault of currant pie is extreme sourness small fruits should be looked over carefully before they are cooked currants are troublesome but they must nevertheless be looked after warily on account of their extreme stemminess green gooseberry tart top and tail the gooseberries put into a porcelain kettle with enough water to prevent burning and stew slowly until they break take them off sweeten well and set aside to cool when cold pour into pastry shells and bake with a top crust of puff paste brush all over with beaten egg while hot set back in the oven to glaze for three minutes eat cold ripe gooseberry pie top and tail the berries line your dish with crust and fill with berries strewing white sugar among them cover and bake damson tart pick over the fruit put in a dish lined with pastry sweeten very freely cover and bake brush with beaten egg when done and return to the oven for a few minutes to glaze cranberry tart wash and pick over the berries 
put into a porcelain saucepan with a very little water and simmer until they burst open and become soft run through a colander to remove the skins and sweeten to taste bake in pastry shells with a crossbar of pastry over the top strawberry pie cap and pick over the berries arrange in layers be sprinkled with a good coating of sugar in a shell of pastry fill it very full as strawberries shrink very much in cooking cover with crust and bake huckleberry pie is made in the same way cream raspberry tart line a dish with paste and fill with raspberries made very sweet with powdered sugar cover with paste but do not pinch it down at the edges when done lift the top crust which should be thicker than usual and pour upon the fruit the following mixture one small cup of milk half cream if you can get it heated to boiling whites of two eggs beaten light and stirred into the boiling milk one tablespoonful white sugar one half teaspoonful cornstarch wet in cold milk boil these ingredients three minutes let them get perfectly cold before you put them into the tart replace the top crust and set the pie aside to cool sprinkle sugar over the top before serving you can make strawberry cream tart in the same manner rhubarb tart open skin the stalks with care cut into small pieces put into a saucepan with very little water and stew slowly until soft sweeten while hot but do not cook the sugar with the fruit it injures the flavor by making it taste like preserves have ready some freshly baked shells fill up with the fruit and they are ready to serve or you may after sweetening the stewed rhubarb stir in a lump of butter the size of a hickory nut for each pie also a well-beaten egg for each and bake in pastry lay cross bars of pastry over the top rhubarb pie covered skin the stalks cut in lengths of half an inch strew lavishly with sugar and fill the crusts with the raw fruit some scatter seedless raisins among the rhubarb cover and bake nearly three-quarters of an hour brush with egg while hot and return to the oven to glaze eat cold as you do all fruit pies end of section thirty eight